Sometimes it doesn't take a AAA development studio to create a timeless game. In fact, some of the best games to be released over the last 10 years have been independent efforts from individual creators or small teams like Dream Daddy, Undertale, and, of course, Stardew Valley. Created by Eric Barone in 2016, this farming game is all of the best bits of Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, and Slime Rancher combined together into a heartfelt little game with pixel graphics and a lot of charm. We've all imagined ourselves living the simple life, or the good life if you want to get 1980s BBC sitcom about this, escaping our everyday life, establishing a farm, settling down with someone, and battling mine monsters and evil corporate greed with a mixture of black magic connecting with nature and supporting local business. You know, a normal fantasy. One amazing thing about Stardew Valley is that there are still things you can discover even after years of playing, whether that be via new content added through updates or something that has always been there without you knowing about it. Should we look at some? I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 things you didn't know about Stardew Valley. Number 10. Giant Crops it doesn't take magic for you to create a fruit or vegetable the size of your house. It's all about having green fingers and a certain amount of random number generation luck. Let's say you were to plant around eight crops, give or take, all together in a sort of three by three slash, you know, square format. You know, wh however you feel. I'm not telling you specifically what you've got to do, such as cauliflower, pumpkins, or melons. Then upon them all becoming fully grown, there is a whopping 1% chance that they'll merge together to create a mega crop. Because you naturally harvest crops as soon as they are mature, it isn't surprising that many don't know about this, and if you can afford to wait around a few more days for that extra potential windfall, then it is definitely worth it. These monstrous creations can be harvested with an axe and drop a good amount of mini, or, or that should be normal, sized crops for you to sell, with little to no explanation as to why exactly this occurs. Is it just a nice patience bonus from the developers? Is it a sign of the magic imbued into the very earth of the valley? Is it a reward from the Junimos for your continued efforts to thwart Joja Corp? Who knows? Number 9. Purple Shorts to say that Mayor Lewis and Marnie are close isn't really an unknown fact. Actually, it's practically taught in schools. It becomes obvious from year one in Stardew Valley after you spot Lewis's missing purple shorts lying in Marnie's room in full view when you go to visit her to buy animals or hay when she's in. That is, get it together, Marnie. You're meant to be running a business here. It shouldn't take people to make mods just to get you to run your shop consistently. <clears throat> However, Mayor Lewis is a little bit up himself, isn't he? Running unopposed as mayor for so many years, isn't that a limit for consecutive years, has kind of gone to his head. So what if we took his shorts and instead of giving them back to him, did this instead? Putting his shorts into the soup, thankfully, doesn't do anything in terms of messing up your heart ratings with the townspeople. In fact, in terms of strategic gameplay, you will literally be worse off if you were to put a leek into the soup than a pair of unwashed boxer shorts, so take that how you will. Number 8. Strange Statues Supporting Pierre's local business over Joja Mart isn't the only way of helping out your community. Why not take a visit to the local library slash museum from time to time? There's loads of interesting things to read and see and, well, you should know, you found them all. Still, it's amazing what you might learn. For instance, if you've been collecting books by digging up worm spots, you won't just find tips and tricks that will improve your farming, fishing, and mining, but a few will actually contain a bizarre nonsense language that seems to mean nothing. However, if you take the first letter from each word, it will give you an item name and a location in the valley. And should you then put it into the lockbox found at that location, you will be rewarded with a, a, um, a freaky statue with an equally weird name, including question mark, question mark, HMTGF, question mark, question mark, and question mark, question mark, Pinky Lemon, question mark, question mark. So if you want to do up your house like Tia Dalma from Pirates of the Caribbean, then you're in luck. If not, well, that'll teach the mysterious benefactor to have better taste in interior decoration, won't it? Number seven, cheat on the whole town. Like many similar games, Stardew Valley lets you marry NPCs, but only one at a time like a coward. However, there is an added bit of fun to be had if you consider having dozens of people being very angry at you fun. While you can only marry one person at a time, you can in fact date all of the eligible bachelors and bachelorettes in the town at once. 
To the young Casanova who does this, however, heartbreak waits down the line, as if you achieve ten hearts with all of the single NPCs, you will find yourself confronted by them in either Haley and Emily's house or the Star Drop Saloon. If you happen to have a rabbit's foot, you can just about get away with it, but if you don't, then you will be dumped by all of the bachelors or bachelorettes concerned for about a week, when everyone will forgive you and you can continue on your cheating ways. Because Stardew Valley is tiny, so really, who has the luxury of choice because of the implication? Number 6. Hit people with a slingshot. Stardew Valley may be a game wearing many hats, being a farming sim, RPG, dating sim, and monster slaying game, but you cannot kill anyone. You can only kill anthropomorphic balls of slime, skeletons, people's livelihoods, and people's hearts, but in a romantic sense rather than a Kingdom of the Crystal Skull kind of heart-killing thing. However, while cold-blooded murder may be off the cards, excluding the Make Animals Into Meat mods, oh my god, you can still massively annoy people. Giving them naff gifts is one thing, as is blocking their way with chests or your own body, but if you arm yourself with a slingshot, then you can really bring those heart levels down. Haha, <laughs> that'll teach you for snooping around my house at night, Lewis. Stop picking me up off the floor when I pass out. I wanted to sleep outside. Number 5. Golden Statue Marnie isn't the only secret mayor Lewis is hiding, it turns out. He also fancies himself as a bit of an artist, too. With an update added to Stardew Valley comes a discovery that not only continues to encourage your campaign to systematically drive every citizen up the wall with your shenanigans, but also earn you a bit of extra money on the side. After following the instructions left to you on one of those mysterious notes hidden in improbable places, you'll discover the mayor's secret project, a golden statue of himself. Bit narcissistic, really, Lewis. But when you try to help him with some exposure by sticking it in the middle of the town square so it can be properly appreciated by the townsfolk, you get a polite, if strongly worded, letter the next day giving you 175 gold to keep quiet. While the money may be a one-time thing, you can keep finding the statue and can continue to put it around town to help promote the local art scene. If you won't let people appreciate your art, I will, Lewis. I got you. Number 4. The Amazing Mods I'm fairly certain that all games have mods now, whether the developers like it or not. Hell, Bethesda seem to be running their entire company on the assumption that they don't need to spend money fixing buggy games when they know people online will mod and fix it all for free. Being a simple game in terms of style at least, with the complexity being more in the layers of content, Stardew Valley has allowed for many incredibly talented people to make mods that don't just change the appearance of the game, but actively transform it into something so much bigger. One example is Stardew Valley Expanded, a mod which adds hundreds more hours of content into the game with bigger maps, more events, and new NPCs and questlines. Also included are brand new areas that were only mentioned in the vanilla game, such as Grampleton Fields. In fact, if you play this before finishing the vanilla game, you may struggle to actually tell the difference between what is mod and what is original. Other mods have redone maps, added new NPCs, animal reskins, and even added new rooms to your farmhouse, which are all fairly indistinguishable from the base game, both in their levels of charm and quality. There is still a thriving modding community, with their own Discord and active discussion forums for anyone who wants to try their hand at changing up this little 2D pixel world for their own needs. Number 3. Dove Children First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a demonetized. Well, when a mummy or daddy and a daddy or mummy love each other very much, or a daddy and a daddy or a mummy and a mummy, although there's usually a longer uh, adoptive legal process involved, Anyway, somewhere down the line, uh, then comes a baby in a something carriage. But what happens if those little tykes ruin everything in in Stardew in Stardew Valley? In Star not in in Stardew Valley. In yeah. Well, why not take a leaf out of Hans Christian Andersen's book and do away with your children in a dodgy but at least it's not murdered supernatural way? Simply pop into the witch's hut and provide a prismatic shard to the aptly named Dark Shrine of Selfishness, and you will transform your wonderful, cheerful spawn into doves, where they will fly away forever and never return. It's best to imagine they live the rest of their lives in blissful freedom rather than, you know, short and tragic fashion, considering you never told them about the dangers of windows, screen doors, or, or cars. Well, you know, whatever helps you sleep at night, I suppose, you monster. Number 2. NPC Backstories 
Once you've reached a certain amount of hearts with the other townsfolk, you can venture into their bedrooms and poke around like the nosy sod you are. However, it's around that time that you may discover a sad, hidden undercurrent to their seemingly carefree lives through notes and letters written by or to them concerning themselves or other villagers. One of the less depressing examples, although that isn't saying much, is Clint's continued pining for Emily, or indeed anyone who will give him the time of day. Although this is also hinted through conversation, festival-specific dialogue, and missions, there are more serious secrets out there to be found. The extended lineage of the Mulner family can be discovered through this letter in Evelyn's room, revealing a loss that connects several of the town's members together. And similarly, you can learn of the troubled past of Year 2 NPC Kent because of his experiences on the battlefield, with him telling his wife Jody that he is not the man you once knew. Hang on, battlefield? Where does that fit into Stardew Valley? Number 1. The War the existence of something as bleak and terrible as war in an otherwise cheerful universe is a relatively common occurrence in popular media as either a way to make sense of in-universe things you were meant to suspend your disbelief over or to simply ruin your childhood enjoyment. Why do children in Pokemon leave home at 10 and train to battle monsters? Where are the fathers in this world? War! What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again if, you, if you're up for it. Well, Stardew Valley makes it more than just a theory. Teased and mentioned in books and snippets of dialogue, the Valley is actually just a small community within the Fern Gill Republic, a larger unseen land with an unexplained history, although we gather it's some shade of a capitalist society considering the prominence of Joja Corp. But one thing we do know is that they seem to be engaged in an ongoing conflict with the Gotaro Empire, a similarly unseen and unexplained land south of the Gem Sea. The war is apparently in full swing, with mentions of of prison camps and the travelling merchants sneaking apparently forbidden items in and out of the place for years. This does explain the lack of eligible bachelors over the age of 25 in the town, as well as the location of the absent partners of the ineligible NPCs. There's no mention on who Jazz, Shane, or Penny's fathers are, or where they are now, either. But putting it into the perspective of the player escaping a machine-like corporation and settling into a dig-for-victory mentality in a down-to-earth rural community with more women than men and where food and raw minerals are a very valuable commodity, it starts to make a lot of sense. And that's our list. What secrets and discoveries have you found in your favourite games? Providing that game is Stardew Valley. Let us know in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.